call me William. I don't know if you remember me. I introduced myself here under the Poplar Bridge about three and a half years ago. I spoke about uh, the year or two I had on the road and the arrogance and hubris of the community and the neighbors that I had encountered thus far in my travels through America. The entitlement of neighbors and communities that they are good people and they will take care of any problems, especially homelessness. There's no need for homeless. There are no homeless because my neighbors, like me, are good people. And no one will ever want as long as they are in our community, my neighborhood. Three and a half years down the road, the water fountains are mostly gone in the parks. They went after the restrooms were closed and handrails put on the benches that remained. In the neighborhoods, if there are homeless shelters, they are persecutorial. As I mentioned three and a half years ago, no need for homeless shelters with such fine neighbors as mine. Three and a half years later now, back in Memphis, the Arctic weather here where it dropped to the teens at night was met with a uh, report on the news that the Lewis Senior Center was going to open as a warming shelter for homeless people. That lasted one night before it was reported on the same station that the warming center at the Lewis Senior Center was closing. Oddly, there was no explanation why. After I got cellulitis, I believe it's called, on my feet and had to be hospitalized because I could no longer walk. And I spent three days in the hospital having, having an antibiotic therapy with antibiotics constantly being fed through an intravenous tube as well as a topical put on my foot. When the hospital discharged me, their reference as to where I as a homeless man should go did not surprise me. The mission down on Poplar, here's a ticket to get you in. After hobbling down there, because the, the public hospital is not far from the homeless men's shelter on Poplar. As I hobbled down there and went to the, to the front desk to hand in my ticket and get one more good night's rest, 
before hitting the street again. I, I smirked when the man behind the counter said that'll be six dollars. I said, I'm homeless. <laughs> he said, that'll be six dollars. I said, I got a ticket here. It says I get free lodging tonight and dinner. He said, we're not taking those tonight. Six dollars. Then I pulled out the Ace and a Hope. I'm coming from region. That'll be six dollars. I scoffed and smiled to myself. Anger has long since been gone with the concern I have for these neighbors and these communities. I just turned and walked out, and took an eight milligram, would it be milligram? <laughs> eight, uh, eight percent, uh, alcohol dose of, uh, 211 and put myself in a 211 in progress. Dialed up the old 8% and steeled my reserve against the last night of the Arctic weather that came through here past week or two. In any case, it's the end of another year. And this year, I'm looking forward to next year. I'm optimistic. Why? Because next year is a new decade. And the one years will be over. The one years that gradually grew and grew and grew to where adventurers, drifters, homeless people were forced to deal with neighbors, were forced to deal with communities, even though they meant them no harm and they meant them no problems. And were persecuted if they went outside the neighborhood or the neighbors by daring to go to a Christian or religious mission in whatever city, be it Houston or Memphis. So here's to the new year. Can't certainly be as bad as the past 10 years. Maybe I'll gain some trust among the neighbors. And maybe they'll gain some trust in me in the new year. And hopefully both they and I will see our way clearly now to a home for myself. In 2020, 